I want you guys to look at the top here for number one. It says consider the tables representing the cost of pizzas with delivery and the cost of pizzas without a delivery charge. We're continuing our work from the problems we did the other day. This time we're going to make a ratio and I want to remind you of a couple things. So pick up your pencil. There's not a lot of room to write it up here, but the number of pizzas is our input. And the cost in dollars is what? Output. Our output. And then the middle is the rule? The middle would be the rule. And we already know that the rule here is seven times the number of pizzas. So I'm just going to squeeze it down here. Seven times the number of pizzas gives us our price. And if you remember, typically we call this X and we call this Y. But variables can be changed. And in this problem, the book has been asking us to use the equation cost is equal to 7 times N. The N is in place of the X and the C is in place of the Y. Our cost is our output and this is our input. Do we have a delivery fee with this one? No. So I'd like you to add plus zero because we're not adding anything here, but we're just going to make that zero visible, that it's just the cost times the number of pizzas and no other fee. Make sense? Mm -hmm. We're being asked to write a ratio, mm -hmm. and the ratio is y divided by x because we know that that equals what? The, um, Y divided by X equals K for our constant. The ratio is 0 over 0. Open up your calculators. Divide 0 by 0. It does say error. It does say error. Divide by 0. This is what we call undefined. It's not possible to make 0 groups. When we're dividing, we're putting it in the number of groups, right? That's the whole idea behind division. And if I have zero groups, I can't divide into zero groups. That's why this is undefined. Uh, what is the Y here? Seven. Seven. seven, and the X is? Nine. So we're going to make our ratio seven over one. Next one down is 14, 14 over 2, two. and then 21, 21 over, three. over 3, and then 28 over 4. Can those be reduced? Yes. What do they get reduced to? 7 over 1. Yep, 7 over 1. Meaning that whatever our y is, if we divide it by x, we're going to get our constant k, which is 7 over 1. I don't know why they put the questions in this order, but if you look underneath, this says complete the table for pizzas with delivery, and this says complete the table for pizzas without delivery, which is weird, because we do the without table first, but the question is second. Let's go ahead and take a moment and answer this. What do we notice about the ratios in this table here? They all became, yep. What's a big math word we could use to show that those things are equal to each other? Um, equivalent. Seven over one. Yep, they are all equivalent seven to 7 over 1. Even. What do you guys think is going to be a true about the one with the delivery fee? Are they going to be equivalent to the same thing, or no. is it going to be all different? All, all different. different. Okay, let's go up and check it. And again, all of this is being recorded, so if I go too fast or you miss something, you can go back and watch it. Okay. What is my ratio? Remember, our ratio is y over x. What's our y here? Uh, y. And what's our x? Zero. Again, I just had you divide 0 divided by 0, and you got an error message. Do you think it'll be the same with 5 divided by 0? No, 5 divided by 0 will be 0. Try it. 5 divided by 0. Mm -hmm. Error. Error. Oh, what the 
Do you remember our conversation the other day about will you have to pay a delivery fee if you didn't order any pizza? No. And we decided that in real life that does not happen. But if you remember with our equation, it was the cost is equal to 7n plus 5. And so when we put a zero in here, this became zero, but we were left with five. But it doesn't make sense in the real world to pay five dollars for something you're not having delivered. Yeah. yeah. Right? So this again is un undefined. Undefined. You okay? Yeah. Okay. What do we have here? Twelve over one. And then nineteen over are those equivalent to each other? No. So what it asks us down here, what do we notice about these ratios? They are not equivalent. They are not equivalent. And look, I'm starting to say they are equivalent. Oopsie. They are not equivalent. A delivery fee really messes with things, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, we're going to turn to the next page. And I want you to compare the graphs and algebraic rules of the two pizza scenarios. Well, they haven't given us the algebraic rules, but we know them, so let's write it down. This is y is equal to what? 7, I'm sorry, not y, they have it as c. 7n plus 0. And this one is cost is equal to 7n plus 5. Usually we don't put the plus 0 there, but I really want you guys to see that this 5 is right here. It's where the line starts. Where does this line start? At the zero. At zero. And what are we adding here? Zero. Okay, we'll get back to that later. It's called the y-intercept later. You don't need to learn that now, but I just want to make the connection for the future. Okay, how can you identify the rate of change using these graphs and algebraic rules? Well, the rate of change when we are over 1 should give you the amount. What's our rate of change? 7 over 1. So 7 over 1 is our rate of change or we can say it's y divided by x because rate of change and the constant of proportionality are the same thing. What about this? Can I say that this alone is the rate of change for this problem? No. No, because this has to have that number minus 5. Yeah. Right? It's still going to be times 7 for every pizza, but we have to take away the 5 from it first. So can we find the rate of change and the constant of proportionality from this graph? No, no we can only find it from the proportional one. Yeah. Because y divided by x equals k, k when the line, line is straight and it goes through the origins. So B, this question feels really repetitive to me as your math teacher, but I think what the book is trying to do is help you connect the vocabulary. Because it's saying for the proportional situation, how can you identify the constant of proportionality? Uh, the same way. Right? Yeah. How do we find the constant of proportionality? Y divided, divided by, by x, x equals k. k. I'm going to write it big. Because it's also the, the unit rate. You know what? We talked about it up here, but we didn't write it down. We would have to take the 12 minus 5 equals 7. Every time with this graph, you'd have to take the 5 away, right? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, and now we're to the reason I wanted you guys to have four colors. And I'm going to have to zoom out just a bit so we can see the whole page. We are going to, before we answer these questions, do four different graphs on this graph. Do you notice that this graph has no numbers on it? Yeah. David Lee, focus please. We are going to have to add the numbers. And the first thing you want to do is look through these numbers that are in these tables. What's the highest number that you see? Uh, 18. 18 is the biggest number I see. And it is in the X column or the Y column? Uh, y column. Okay, let's look at this graph here. And we're going to draw a line here. Is this the X or the Y that I just drew? The Y. X, 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 X goes across and Y goes up and down. Let's draw a line here for the Y. When I look at these tables, I'm noticing that the X's have the same three numbers in all three tables. It's all just 0, 1, and 2. Do you guys see that? Yes. So let's start here with 0. <coughs> I'm going to skip a line. Let me zoom in so you guys can see this better as I make the graph. I'm going to say that this is one half and this is my one. This is one and a half and this is two. One, two and a half and three. And I'm not going to do any more than that because I'm only graphing zero, one, and two on the x axes. The y axis goes up to 18 though. There's not 18 lines here. So we're going to count by 2. Let's say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 14, 16, 18. We can stop at 20 because we're only going up to 18. Okay, the first table says that x is 0. Have you guys ever heard the run and jump idea with these graphs? No. If I start at 0 and I run across the x, then I jump up to the y number. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm starting at 0, and I can't show you my table and be zoomed in on the graph, but you guys have table A in front of you. I want you to pick one of your colors. Actually, let me do this with you. And I'm going to put a, a dot next to it for that color. And I know you guys are going to have these. You can see this in your book. You're not going to be able to see it on my screen, but I'll re be referencing this table. For table A, we're going to start at 0. And the x is 0. So do I move to the right or do I just stay there? Stay there. And then I'm going to go up to what? 2. 4. four. Put my first point there. My second point is 111. So I'm going to go over to 1. And I'm going to go up halfway between 10 and 11 and put my second dot. You mean 10 and 12. I did mean 10 and 12, which is what I did. That's not what I said. Thank you. And I'm going to go to 2. And what is it going up to? All the way up here to 18. And I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to draw my line. Pick color two for B. Let's go back up here and put a dot next to it for your color. And I'm going to scoot this so we can see. First point is zero and zero. Where does that stay then? Zero. At the origin. And the second number is one and seven. And the third is two and 14, so it goes here. 
And I'm going to draw a straight line that goes through the origin, which means it's what? It's proportional. Pick your color for C. You're welcome. I'm going to end up with 0, 7. So my x is 0, my y is 7. So I'm going to start here. The 1 is 7.5. So it's right about here. And the 2 is only at 8. This is not a very steep line at all. Because 2 is going to come up to 8. And that line almost looks straight, doesn't it? I mean, it almost looks vertical. Horizontal. Wow, I can't speak today. And make my arrow. Choose your last color for D. When I look at that table for D, I'm noticing that it also starts at the origin. Do you see the first point is zero, zero in our table? Yeah? So it goes here. Same point. Second is at one comma two. And the third is at two comma four. And then I'm going to draw my line. So we have some questions to answer about this graph. Even if you're not finished with your graph, I want you to pick your pencil back up. Again, you can go back and fast forward the video to get to this if you want to finish it up later. What do you notice about those lines? Are they all straight? No. no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really except green my green one I didn't draw very well, but it's supposed to be straight. Are they all proportional? Which ones are proportional? Uh, D and B. D and B. Which ones are not proportional? C and A. Okay, so let's go up here. It says, when a relationship is proportional, you can multiply the input value to get the output value. Which tables represent proportional relationships? Well, we can tell from the graph, because we've done a lot of work talking about straight lines through the origin. As you guys said, it's B and D. Here's where I want your pencil, and this is really important. Up above B, what do you guys see as the rule? What happened between 1 and 7 and 2 and 14? It got multiplied by 7. It got multiplied by 7. I want you to write the equation for that line, and we will come back to this later, but I know this fact because I teach algebra, and I want you to have it here. Y is equal to 7X plus 0. It's basically the same as our pizza problem, except I'm using the x and y language for variables instead of the n and c. Why is it plus zero? Um, because it's zero. Zero. No, adding. Uh, because, it of, zero. because of because it starts at the origin. Oh. Right. This one is like that too. It's y is equal to two x plus zero. Oh, so that was that Mm -hmm. Well, this one is y is equal to, I'll be honest, I haven't figured it out. It's some number times x plus is, 7. Is it 7 times, is it, um, no. 150. No. I mean 50. Yeah. Well, it's getting a half each, each time. Isn't it, so isn't it 0. 0.50 times um, plus 7? I'll figure it out later, but let's put a question mark there for now. I know it's a plus 7 because this 7 tells us that. This is like the delivery fee. It's going to get added on every single time. This is getting multiplied by something small. That's why it only went up 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5. Right? But the seven's being added on at the end. What do you guys think this one's 
at equal to y equal it's four. again some four. numbers being multiplied by x but what's being added on uh, four. Plus, four. Plus, four, yeah. plus four isn't it seven plus four I mean seven x plus four we'll get back I'll, I'll make sure I know exactly what they are instead of less guessing at it I'm just seeing a relationship and this is like I told you guys the other day a lot of times because I teach seventh grade math and algebra when I see a connection to algebra I'm gonna point it out to you and this equation we're working with up here is a very big equation in algebra and it's in our graph you guys are doing it and they just expect to tell you later and I don't see any reason not to tell you now okay when we have a plus zero or this just says y equals 7x it's going to be proportional. When we're multiplying something by x and we're adding a number, notice that plus 4, where did this graph start? At 4. Where did this graph start? This one here? At 7. Right? That plus 4 plus 7 is telling us where it starts. Okay, so this question is really long and worded crazy, but basically it's saying which tables represent relationships that are non-proportional? Which ones are not proportional? Oh, um, A and C. A and C. A and C. With that, we have 11 minutes. You guys have two more problems in the book I want you to work on. Turn the page, four and five. There are some online problems that go with this, but we do not have time today. I'd like you to try to spend about five minutes on this page and five minutes on this page. And if you don't finish, you'll have time to finish tomorrow and then get into the online work. Okay? We are finished with the colored pencils, though, and the calculators, and so I'm going to start calling groups to go put things away.